Hey guys, welcome to part five. Part five of the ah. Mean Streets of Gadgets and Light Forge Arena tier list card review valuation meta analysis two dudes talking at you show. Part five. We have Almost been recording there, nonstop. We've been streaming between these as well, answering some questions and like, you know, getting up and walking around. We are now in the fourth hour and we started at like 11 o'clock at night. So it is now 3 a.m. Yeah. All right. So I have lost all my wind, but we are now finally at the neutrals. We are at the neutrals, the most exciting, AKA least exciting. And apparently Adapto wants to take the lead on this one. I and do, I'm a little bit worried. Because I'm, I'm so like pumped. So, dude, Adam, did you want to talk? I do, do want to talk, talk about, well, no, do you want? <laughs> By the way, do I'm want... Adwukta. That's Murps. Hi. Uh, do you we want are to the talk grinning about... goat. Do you want to talk about any themes or do you just want to get into the cards right away? If you watch Twitch, we are at twitch.tv slash grinning goat. We have a podcast too, which is also on the YouTube, but you can like download it in normal podcasting services like iTunes or like Stitcher and probably other stuff too. We talk about the arena in that podcast and on our stream and now. Sorry, what were you saying? Nothing. Get. All right. Whatever. So, yeah. so this is like a new expansion that's coming out and it has cards and these cards create a meta and if you didn't hear the if you go back and watch the jade stuff i open up with this like meta analysis of all these themes and we, we punched them in certain points i'm sure we forgot to like point out some stuff that fit this but the general idea is what's going to happen is you're not gonna have two drops you're just not um and we're talking about this again in the neutral section because the neutral set is what all the classes get so they're all going to get all this stuff and it's going to be like that's what defines the meta so you're not gonna have any two drops because there's only one common two drop for the record, it is a pretty good two drop. Um, it is our second highest rated common card for this expansion, which is the Friendly Bartender. Um, uh, but that's it, that's all you get. The Friendly Bartender is rated a 58, which puts it on par with stuff like like almost a Mech Warper or a Pompous Thespian, or, or like better than, or, or like a huge right. Toad. Like it's good. Um, doesn't look good, but healing is good. And two drops that do anything is good. And you're gonna heal at least one. So it's going to do something. Um, like, you know, if you play later on. Yeah, yeah. And more importantly, it has, a, you know that scenario where, like, you get the board and you, like, you finally stabilize and you're like, ah, oh, crap, I'm dead. This is going to yeah. make that a little less likely to happen. Um, right. Look, if you're able to heal, like, two health to your hero, which won't happen that often, but if you actually do, this is really good, right? Like, this mm -hmm. is, like, actually uh, quite a good card. Um Part of the reason, like Adam says, uh, the score is a little bit higher than what you might expect just because you need two drops and this yeah. is the only legit, like solid two drop that this, uh, that is being offered in the neutral cards. Yeah, like if you look at all the neutral cards, like just going down this list, I know you can't see, you guys can't see the full list, but outside of like the top premium cards, you have like your Krakens, your Shredders, your Zombie Chows, your Bot Creepers, your Haunted Creeper, your Dark Iron Dwarf. After that, starting at like 60, like, more than 50% of the cards here are two drops. That's how freaking important it is that you take two drops. Like, Acetic Swamp Boost is at the top, Flame Juggler's at the top, Amani Berserker's at the top, Mad Bomber's at the top, Mech Warper, Pompous Thespian, This Friendly Bartender, Huge Toad, Biofin Tidehunter, Fairy Dragon, Giblin Stalker. Like, I'm literally reading down and I'm skipping less than 50% of the cards. Reading down the list of the commons. Because that's what's important now in commons. Because you don't have any. Like, with this offering bonus coming in, and there's no two drops except this freaking bartender that is good, but it's just one person, you're going to take all the two drops. So, if there's one thing you take away from this whole, like, four-hour-long thing, freaking draft the freaking two drops when you freaking see it, unless you're rogue, then it doesn't matter as much. There are no offering bonuses to, like, the class card two drops either. Because there are no class two drops except for rogue in the common spots in this expansion. This is like the expansion that is going to like ruin the two curve. All right. So, so I want to get that out. And then I was actually going to start from the bottom 
and go to the top. But Murphs was very much objecting to that strategy. So I'm instead going to start at the top and go to the bottom. Cool? Whatever you want, man. All right. So the next thing we want to talk about is the 4-3 meta. So at the very top, the number one rated card, common uh, neutral card, I mean, in this expansion, it's not that impressive. Um, it's the 13th highest rated card. That means there are 13 card, 12 cards higher than it. Well, not 12. Uh, there's 11 cards higher than it. It's tied with the other one. There's 11 cards higher than it in the neutral common slot. There are not that many expansions. Like, this is just a weak expansion for neutral cards. It is a higher gun. It's still good, though. You're at the Mad Bomber level. You're at the Amani Berserker level. When it comes to threes, you're at the Scarlet Crusader. Um, uh, uh, Harvest Golem, right? And that's because you play this when after they play a 2-3, and you win. You just, you win. Um, which is very good. Or you play this, and they have like a 4 mana card with like a 4 health. It's good. It, like, it will kill it. And it trades with your normal threes. Um, and you get an offering bonus. You can see a lot of it. Anything else you want to say about a good. hired gun? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we've seen the effect with uh, Evil Heckler, right? Yep. Versus the Yeti. Um, and how good the taunt from the Evil Heckler uh, is, even the though... Evil Heckler is only one point better than this guy. Yeah. Um, and so you're going to see the taunt positively sort of uh, impact your win rate quite a lot. And... Um, because uh, of sort of um, how this sort of, like, because of all the cards that are offered um, in this expansion, like, you're going to be drafting and using this card quite a lot as well. Yep. And that's just one. You get another one. It's a Toxic Sewer Ooze. This one's not as good. You remove one durability from your opponent's weapon. They have to have a weapon. It doesn't work against a lot of the weapons with uh, more charges. And if they, like, clip a weapon and don't use up the charge, you don't get to kill the whole weapon. So it's, you know, it's not as good as a Cedic Swamp Ooze, but it's still very good. It's like it's like a Giblin Stalker, a Fairy Dragon. Where else do we have it similar to? Um, it's not a lot of three drops around where it is. But, like, you know, it's it's up there, right? It's in your, like, happy-to-pick-it kind of, like, category um, at a 57. And what it's going to do is that because it's also a 4-3, you're going to just see a lot of 4-3s in the meadow at the three-drop slot. And that's okay, but what that means is your two threes are going to be great, your two, I mean, your three twos are going to be great. Your two threes are going to be less good. And we've accounted for that in the tier list. It's one of the major adjustments uh, that, that we made. So that's the 4-3 meta. And it's accounted for by literally two of the top three cards. And the third, the one in the middle, is the friendly bartender. Those are the top cards. That's what this meta is about. It's not about, like, big powerful cards that you pick as a neutral and sets the meta. It's about how the meta shifts the curve. And how that affects how the whole game plays out in the early going. Um, so there's that. Uh, let's go on to the next one because there's other good cards too like again these are not great they're just like above average cards you're like happy to take all this is in that like zone right your Meg, your Meg Yeti zone your like Ogre Brute zone it's just it's, it's all one zone um, like take this this is a big time Racketeer it's a 56 it's only one less than the Toxic Sewer Ooze it's two less than the Friendly Bartender barely makes a difference it's good it's a 1-1, one, one, and you get a 6-6 six, six Ogre. That's 7-7's seven, worth of stats on turn 6. It eats your 5-6's, um, you know, because it has the 6-6 the six, six body. And uh, it has two bodies, so if you're, like, aggro, like, your 1-1 one, one will probably live, or your 6-6 six, six will probably live. It can, it can work both ways. Yeah, um, this is one of those cards that, you know, you can either have a 6-7 uh, for the mana cost, uh, Borderfist Ogre, or you can have this. Uh, and sometimes you'll prefer the Boulder Fist Ogre, but I think most of the time you, you're going to like the uh, the fact that uh, it's a battle cry, the fact that you can do stuff with the one one body, um, and, and you know you're not consolidating all within the six six body as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's good. It's better than your Boulder Fist Ogres. Um, it's Boulder Fist Ogre. That's a good comparison point. We should find the Boulder Fist Ogre. Bodefus Ogre is not that high. Bodefus Ogre is barely no. above average. It is a 52, right? And this guy is a 56. It's four points above a Bodefus Ogre. That's like quite a lot. Um, yeah, for our tier list, it's huge. Yeah, four it's, points it really is a lot is. in the tier yeah. list. 
Uh, all right, so so that's this is like a serious card. You should get to know it. You should draft it. You should play it. Uh, and remember, right? This is the uh, the turn eight push, and this guy is going to be totally impactful on it uh, before that. So don't worry too much about it being a uh, high mana cost. There's also not like insanely high mana cost cards in this expansion. Um, so your whole mana curve is actually going to be going down, even though the, the effective turn in which you win or lose the game is going to be going later. Uh, it means your total like amount of turns in the game is about the same. Anyway, uh, Hosen Healer is next. It's four mana, restore many to full health. This is like the four mana bad stat line version of Earthen Ring Farseer. And uh, Earthen Ring Farseer is a 53. Hosen Healer is a 56. It's three points higher than a Hose, uh, than a Earthen Ring Farseer. Um, yep. So one thing I want to remind uh, the viewers out there is that we are these are the scores for. Uh, oh yeah. Neutral. Like this is basically what um, the scores are for a neutral class, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and no this hero becomes, power. Right. No hero power. No this other is sort class of, cards. Right. This is the score in a vacuum, um, and. Uh, not all, of, you know, some of these uh, are just going to be the same score throughout, uh, but there's considerations for all the classes. Uh, for some classes, let's say charge is more valuable or wind fury is more valuable, spell power is more valuable. Other classes, um, uh, perhaps like um, just stat distribution or uh, there's like weapon buffs we'll see later on, right? That only affects some classes because other classes just don't have any weapons. So keep that in mind. Yep. Yep. It's definitely a thing. Um, okay, Kooky Chemist. I know yeah, a lot of people really like this card, and they're waiting for it to show up. It's pretty high. It's 56. Um, it's a 4-4. You swap the attack and health of a minion. It's a crazed alchemist, but it's a 4-4 body, which is much better than a 2-2. Uh, but it's not as flexible, right? You can't do it in another thing as easily. You, we don't have crazed alchemist here because I don't have the rare. Um, but crazed alchemist is very similar. Uh, and by very similar, I mean identical at also a 56. Uh, so they're the same. And like I said, right, this is, we didn't mess with these cards. This is just based off the mathematical model. Um, because like they're neutral, there's not that much like to do with it. Like that's actually how the modeling worked out. Uh, so Blizzard really like created very even versions of the cards. Yep. Um, what's up next? Uh, okay, Daring Reporter, 55. Again, like this is these are the neutral cards. They're not terribly exciting. The three three. Whenever your opponent draws a card, gain plus one plus one. So it's gonna be a four four when your opponent gets it. And then the problem is when you get it back. Assuming you get it back, it's still gonna be a four four. Like right. You can't eat anything with it really. Um, but if you don't care about trading, you can go face, and then it becomes a five five, and now it's like a real issue for your opponent to deal with. Right. But part of the problem that we see with daring reporter, and we see with a lot of four drops. You know, you saw it with uh, your kooky chemist you're gonna see it with Hosen uh Healer. Hosen, uh well Hosen Healer is a little bit different but um for health right yep. and oh, during okay. yeah, yeah yeah uh daring reporter is gonna have four health on the first two turns essentially or yeah uh the next two turns um and that plays into the four three meta yeah, right? exactly so you yep. may wonder right like four three doesn't seem like a good stat line why would anyone take those four three so high it's because there's all these other cards that are like not just they're just not very good drops but you're going to take right. enough of them that you may have to play them on drops on curve yeah. drops remember this entire expansion has no three fours has no four fives has no five sixes there's there's no like like premium curve cards you all this is all you get and they have an offering bonus you're going to take them yep um low gill sniper uh is a card it comes in and remember all those were like seriously above average like their cards you're happy taking at blowgill sniper you start getting to the point where you're like okay taking it in your deck but you're not like oh my god yes i have a blowgill sniper um it's worse than elven archer elven archer is a 55 this is a 53 it's two mana two one deal one damage battle cry uh doesn't look as good as an elven archer it's not as good as an elven archer but it's still yeah, it has utility Swing that one damage around, it, it's just more useful than you may think, right? Like, right. Iron Forge Rifleman does stuff, and it just has one more health for one more mana. 53, going down, but like still the same score, actually. Uh, it's a four mana, five, four. Battlecry, give your weapon plus one attack. 
we talked about this when we were talking about the rogue and how great it is for the rogue um it's not as good for some of the other weapon classes but still like you know it'll get a significant bump from where it is but otherwise it's a bird it's rated the same as a bird right uh so what is it in rogue uh it was really high wait a second It is not the same. Uh, why is it not the same? Are they the same? Okay, so it could be that the pirate tag is like literally like pushing the Naga Corsair up a tiny, tiny bit, and they're like they're both like the Naga Corsair is like at the bottom of fifty three, and the bird is at the top of the. I don't think so though. I'm gonna I'm gonna look into why Naga Corsair is not a bird. Sure. Um. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, uh, so in the Rogue, it is insanely high. In the Rogue, Naga Corsair is... Also, this is like oh, past 3 a.m. Sorry, it's a little less coherent than the earlier ones. Naga Corsair is a 62 in Rogue. Pretty good. I mean, yeah. that is a sizable difference, right? And yeah, uh, remember, it's a huge difference. Right. Uh, remember with uh, sort of the, the spacing with our tier list, um, anything above 60 is really, really good. Mm -hmm. So this is uh yep this I'm definitely up there with that like creeper. Yeah, yeah, and it should be. Yeah. It should be. Um okay, so that's the Naga Corsair. And uh moving down the list, we're now at pretty much average cards. This is 51. It's pretty much an average card. Um and 51 is also where a croc is. 53 is where a river uh where a raptor is. So this is a gadgets and socialite. It's a two mana two two, and you restore two health. Like smaller Earthen Ring Farseer. Yeah, uh, or it's a Voodoo Doctor that survives, right? Yeah, yeah. And Something that's like why, that. like having one health is such a big penalty because this is actually like higher than Voodoo Doctor. Yep. Um, okay. Ancient Blossoms is uh, 50, I think, or is it still 51? Ancient Blossoms is a 50. It's a 3-8 Taunt. There's not much to say about this card. Uh, the Taunt is really effective. Three attacks a little too small, but, so you have this trade-off. It's very well-balanced, right? Like, it looks like it's a well-balanced card. And what do you know it is a well-balanced card? You'll take it. Um, it'll it's just sad down because... Most people think of uh, Bog Creeper, right? And yeah. it's like, all right, let's slow down. It's obviously not Bog Creeper, but uh, it's still a draftable card. It's a draftable card, yeah. Not a premium, just a draftable card. And then we get to a card where I think a lot of people rate it higher than this, and I think they're wrong about it. It's a Mistress of Mixtures. This is a 50. I think it's a dead average card. I think you're better off with a 2-drop than um, a Mistress of Mixtures uh, on average. Because the two drops hold the board. The Mistress of Mixtures is like a little bonus. And it's a one mana 2-2. Two, two, and the Death Rattle is restore four health to both players. So, um, one mana 2-2 two, two seems like it's good. And it could take care of a 3-2. But it really just trades with any other one drop. And it gets eaten by a 2-3. And then doesn't do anything. Like, it's just kind of unnecessary tempo at this point, And it's very, like dangerous to just put out because you have to be the first one to put it out it's turn one so on turn one it does stuff and it's okay um later on it's like zombie chow right um and it could save you but at the same time it could be a super dead card yeah, just like a dead well. card um yeah. zombie chow is good because it actually trades with both two drops right it trades with a three two and a two three this only trades with one of them Uh, Tanaris Hog Chopper, same thing. It's a four mana four four. If your opponent's hand is empty, gain charge. This actually happens more often than you think, right? Once your opponent gets into a top deck situation, this thing just says charge. So it'll have charge sometimes. Yeah, but even then, how good is a four mana four four charge? Right? It's not a better than a four beater. mana four four. That is very true. Very true. Uh, and better than a four mana six three. <laughs> um, uh, for its ability to potentially have charge. Uh, so the 4 mana 6 3 is one point lower. It's a 49. Just a stat distribution thing. Um, it, yes, it can reach up, but it also gets killed by 3 drops. So you're doing this trade-off here. Uh, generally speaking, like you would much rather have like a bird, right? Like a 5-4 distribution. 
it's just much more secure and you're unlikely to use that six mana uh, that six attack like your opponent has to be playing like a four six or a five six so now we're going down and now we're going to like bad cards so you notice like a lot of these common cards are actually good uh we we said this about the tier list uh when we first introduced uh when we introduced it in uh in our our part two um th there was actually a a, a a power creep we had to move cards down to keep our center at 50. and that's because if you look at all these cards there were so many common neutral cards that were like above average. And now we're at the below average part and you're just not going to find a lot of these cards. There's only five cards left to go through on the, in the commons. So Streetwise Investigator is the first below average card. It's four points below average. So it's solidly below average. Um, but like definitely draftable. It's a five mana, four, six with a battle cry. Enemy minions lose stealth. It, it, it does things. It exists. Yeah. Um, how often Drukic is your enemy going to have stealth? Not very often. How often is that going to be a big deal? Even less often. Right. But uh, look, it can help you out sometime. And even though uh, 5 mana 4-6 is understated, we've sort of dealt with this stat line for quite a while. Um, ever since the beginning when uh, Spiteful Smith was at the, you know, like mm -hmm. sort of anchored the five drop right uh, we didn't have Knight, like actually dominated the meta for so long it did it really did so you're gonna draft this sometimes you're gonna play it and uh 99 out of 100 times you, you just won't even notice the battle cry yep all right the next one doesn't come in like that was a 46 right it's below average but playable there's no more common cards until you get to 39 which is not draftable like these are bad once you hit, once you go below forty, it's very bad. Grook Fu Master is where I'm at. It's a five mana three five with Wind Fury. It has Wind Fury. That's all you need to know. It's a neutral card with Wind Fury. It can't possibly be good. Neutral uh, Wind Furies are terrible. <laughs> right? Um, like, is it better than a uh, Wind Fury Harpy? Yes. Is yeah. it better than a Young Dragon Hawk? Yes. That's that's kind of all you can say for it, though. Uh, Red Mana Worm is um, a, a 38 on the tier list. It comes in pretty much in the same spot. It's a 2-6 for 5 mana, which is awful. And whenever you cast a spell, plus 2 attack, wh which is like... So you have to cast one spell to make it a 4-6. Right. On the turn, you put it out. Like, that's weird. And then it only gains more attack when you play more spells. You don't have that many spells. It's the arena. You don't want a combo card. It's bad. Yep. Look, there are decks in which you will make this work, right? There are going to be decks that you face and also decks that you create in which you say, oh man, it is worth so much more than a 38. But on average, this thing is a pretty bad card. Um, you just don't have the spells. And even if you have spells, when once you put it out there, like you either have to put it out on like turn 10 and play the spell on the same turn to just get it to below average mm -hmm. still. Um, or you need to, you know, put it out and hope that it's okay, and then you maybe play one spell or two spells next. It's just so much work, yeah. um, so much investment. Yeah, like you see how like bored we're getting of this. Um, it's not because we've been doing this for four and a half hours now. It's kind of because of that, but it's also because the neutrals in this expansion are just not that interesting. Like, what were our things? Our first point about neutrals was no two drops. It's the lack of something. The nothingness was more interesting than what we actually got in terms of cards. What's our next point? There are two four threes. We didn't even care about what the card, like, what the actual abilities were on the minions. Just the fact that they were good and they had stat distributions of a certain kind. And after that, it was just a bunch of like, yeah, we've seen this before. We're, oh, that's okay. They just kind of cloned a bunch of cards old god style. So it's just not a very exciting expansion from a neutral perspective, which is why if you watch previous card reviews, we always did neutral first because that set the whole stage for what the meta was going to be like. And then we put classes into the meta. This expansion is the opposite. We have the classes creating the meta and then we slot some random two, like uh, some random like neutral cards in. Um, so now we're at the cards that really don't matter. The Backstreet Leper is a 26. I... Two damage to enemy hero, three, one for three mana. It's awful. It's you got totally the memes. awful. Backstreet's uh, back. Oh, oh not right. all right. Not all right. And then finally, we're at the very, very bottom. Bottom of the bottom. Worst common card. Worst common neutral by a mile. Grimscale Oracle is the card above this, and this is a 24. This is a 13, 
what this means because it's it's a, a, an absolute zero and every uh, point is linear that means grimscale oracle actually has about twice the value of the next highest one of street trickster if you double grimscale oracle you basically have an, uh, an average card that's how much below average street trickster is it's like less than a quarter of an average card Wow, no, no, that's not true. It's like a tiny bit above a quarter of an average card. Um, but yeah, it's a 07, and it is our first common demon. <laughs> it is a 07, like common neutral demon. It's a 07 spell damage. Warlocks plus one, everywhere rejoice. Uh, for three mana. Um, don't yes. ever pick it, ever, 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 ever. All right, we're now at rares, and I will go from the bottom to the top on rares. Because I want to. Small time Buccaneer, one mana, one two, has plus two attack. We have a weapon equipped. Uh, Obviously, the weapon score classes. Is very different for Rogue. Yeah, like look at Warrior. For Warrior, it's a uh, forty-five, which is below average but playable, right? Because uh, it turns into a three-two if you do get uh, if you do get the weapon thing to trigger. For Rogues, it is yeah, a sixty-one. It is very uh, good. Do remember that these scores will be different for specific classes, like for a lot of these cards. Yeah. Um, and We're just we pointing out just... the ones that are like 10 points different, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Small Time Buccaneer is one of the best common uh, rare cards for, uh, uh, sorry, best neutral rare cards for Rogue. And that makes sense. It's like almost a bomb lobber. It's an Argent Commander. It's extreme tempo. Yeah. Really good. And it fits yep. so well, right? Turn one, you play it. Turn two, you dagger. Done. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Uh, okay. Spiked Hog Rider. Now, now we're out of, like, the, the bad card zone. We're back into, like, the slightly below average zone. Spiked Hog Rider. This is a card that I'm actually having trouble uh, figuring out the, the valuation for. Um, because of uh, of the percent chance of like which turn you can have taunts, like it's it's not well built, uh, so this may change. I actually fully expect this to change, probably to go up actually. But right now it's at a forty eight. It's a five mana five five, which is pretty good, and then it can get charge at a. It's actually you actually your opponents play taunts, and a lot of taunts have five health, so it's actually like really fitting. Um, unlike the other one, like the 4-4 that charges and your opponent has no cards, like, game's kind of over at that point, right? Like, your charge is not, like, the most important thing in the world. But this yep. actually, like, charges to take care of the thing that it's triggered by. Yeah. Uh, same thing, second rate bruiser. It's a 5 mana 4-5 taunt, which is not that great. But if your opponent has at least 3 minions, which they will at some point, then you can kind of, like tempo out an extra tempo from where you normally have it right it costs two less which makes it three you normally expect to pay four mana for this so yep. again like you're just not going to get it out on turn three because your opponent won't have three minions by turn three backroom bouncer now we're at the above average place it's like slightly above average whenever your friendly minion dies gain plus one attack it's fine it's a four four with upside right it could become a bird it could become higher than a bird I don't think anyone's really too excited by that card. Doppelgangster. We've talked so much about Doppelgangster. If you want to like know how good Doppelgangster is, go watch our Paladin part. Um, because when it gets hand buffed, oh my god, it becomes insane. Like if you buff it twice in your hand with plus one plus ones, it generates sixteen tempo on the turn it gets played for like five mana. Yeah. So uh, this is something that I think is important to keep in mind, um, also because I'm seeing it in the chat as well. When we say that something is average or below average, when people sort of argue that, oh, this is like, I think this is above average, recognize what we mean by average. Like your definition of average is probably different from our definite definition of average. And that's where the disagreement comes from. When we talk about average, it is tierless average. So you might be thinking of average as sort of, you know, th this hypothetical card evaluation, right? And be like, no, 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 like you're wrong. It is significantly above average when you say it is like slightly below average. Um, you want to make sure like uh, we are using the tier list as a comparison, right? So you want to mm -hmm. see like what cards are at the average slot, what cards are at the slightly below average slot, and then see if you have the same disagreement or agreement. 
Yep. And plus, I think people don't really have a good idea of what's actually average and below average and whatever. Like, if you ask you, if I ask you what all the cards are, you're going to come up with like 65 to seventy yeah. percent of cards above average. Right. Um, all right. There's Bomb Squad is our final rare card, and this is the one that actually has impact. Like, Doppelgangster will have impact on the Grammy Goons, but right, right. Bomb Squad will have impact everywhere. This is really important. This is like one of the most important neutral cards they printed. Because it deals 5 damage to an enemy minion. And we all know how hard it is to deal 5 damage. And they keep breaking it down, right? Like, if you saw part 1 of this, you heard me rant about this. Firelands Portal, breaking down the barrier. Shadow Strike, breaking down the barrier. And those were in the last two expansions, respectively. Now, you have a neutral card. And how rare is it for a neutral card to deal damage? This is not even a neutral card that it's deals ridiculous. 3 damage. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't even exist. And now we already get 5. A lot of neutral guards deal 4 damage. Kraken, Argent Commander, Bomb Lobber. That's one of the key reasons 4 health is so bad. But now we're breaking into the 5 health zone. And so it's really opening things up. Like, I really like the existence of this card. So this card's a 59, which means it's very good. But you may be wondering why it's not even higher. It does deal 5 damage and then also put a 2-2 body down. It's like very good tempo. Its tempo is better than a Bomb Lobber. Which is 4 damage but random and a 3-3 for the same mana cost. But this is below a Bomb Lobber in terms of the rating. And it's below the rating despite the, um, the, the tempo because of the Death Rattle. The Death Rattle deals 5 damage to your hero and that really does matter. Like, 5 damage hurts. It's a 6 of your health. Yeah. Um, that might be sort of, I, I don't know if it helps people sort of conceptualize it a little bit more. If, if instead of saying five damage, it said a six of your health, yeah. right? Um, but you know, we keep on preaching and a lot of good arena resources keep on preaching that use your health as a resource, right? Um, you know, you, you want to use it as a resource. It doesn't matter so much, but it still is important. Um, it still is quite important. And I really do believe that, um, all of these sort of sources of damage, they do add up. And you, the amount of games that you win with this card um, and the amount of games that you lose with this card, like, you know, it's not overwhelmingly in favor of, of you know, you winning with this card, mm -hmm. right? Um, and maybe uh, the games that you lose, you would have lost anyways, but it certainly doesn't help that it deals five damage yeah. to your face. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's it for the rares. And now we are at the epics. Wow, we got a lot of epic cards. Okay, let's do the epics. Um, there are no good epics. The highest epic is a 52, which is not that good. Um, and it's the Blubber Baron, 3 mana, 1-1. One, one. Whenever you summon a Battlecry minion while this is in your hand, gain plus 1, plus 1. So it gets buffed whenever you summon a Battlecry. It's above average because it'll actually get quite big. You have a lot of Battlecry minions. And it can just stay safe in your hand while you use them. This is not like uh, the, the whatever the whatever elemental. What elemental is that for a shaman? Hmm. For shaman, what? the elemental that triggers on battle cries deals two damage on it. Oh, the uh, the two six minion. Yeah. 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 I whatever elemental remember. that is, it's not that. That's not safe. That has a lot of health, but it's on the board and it can get killed. This one can't. So. You just uh, you just keep it in your hand, and you'll eventually pay three mana for like a four four or something, and you'll be okay with it. Um, Defias Cleaner, Battle Cry, Silence a Minion with a Death Rattle. So okay, going back to the Blubber Baron, chat seems to really hate on it. Um, I just want to like this is part of your turn eight push. Like, you've played, like, a couple battle cries by then, and then you put this out as a 3-mana 4-4 four, four, or 3-mana 5-5. Five, five. Uh, maybe turn 9, maybe turn 10, and you, you make the push. This is part of that. Uh, Defy's Cleaner is a 6-mana 5-7, which is one less than a Ogre. It is rated a 50. It is dead even. Ogres, remember, like, 2 above this. Um, the redeeming factor is battle cry silence the minion with death rattle. And um, that's good because death rattles are one of the most important things you want to silence. But it's not as good as a you know general silence. So it's still okay. 5-7 is just a really good stat line, actually. Like, if you're going to lose a stat, that's the way to go. Uh, 
Burgly Bully, 47. 5 mana, 4, 6. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, add a coin to your hand. Uh, there's nothing much to say about it. Coin is fine. Um, it, it's got a mini sort of uh, trog effect, right? Mm -hmm. um, in, in which you don't get the stats, uh, but you get a coin, and coins kind of typically mean stats anyway. It's just not on the the minion that you played right away. Um, and coins also add some flexibility. So it's a, it's an understand minion with upside. And we see a lot of those in this expansion. Yep. Leatherclad Hog Leader. Uh, six mana, six, six. If your opponent has six or more cards in hand, gain charge. It'll never gain charge. Your opponent will never have six hands when it's your turn. That's like your opponent has six cards in hand at the beginning of their turn, maybe. Definitely not at the end. Like, conceptualize how that'll have to look. Like, your opponent has to... Well, your opponent has to have a coin and then has to keep the first four cards and then has to take one more card and not play anything on turn one. And then it has six. And then it has to still not play the coin and keep an even draw-play ratio until it becomes turn six for the Leatherhead Hog Leader to come out. Leather clad hog leader. Leather clad yeah. hog leader, right. You gotta like, this just punishes like some like, I don't know, like draw mechanics, right? Like if you, uh, cult master or whatever. It's very situational. Uh, but it's just a six mana, six six, and that's okay. Why not Burglebot's a 42? We're not at a pretty bad spot. These are not good cards. It's a six mana, five five. Whenever this attacks a minion that survives, draw a card. Um, it's anti-tempo. It needs to live a turn in order to have a shot at drawing a card. If it draws a card and survives, it's probably not drawing another card and surviving. It really, like, comparing it to something like a Grand Crusader, yeah. man, it really suffers, right? Grand Crusader, uh, you get the same stats, you get the uh, the card right away, um, and yeah, it's it just, there, there's not much going for this card. <laughs> it's just, it's, I don't, know, I don't know what kind of weird deck it, it fits in, but it's definitely like a constructed synergy deck. All right, now we get to Fight Promoter, 39. We're very down on this card. I know some people like it, but I don't think the stats work out. It's a 6 mana 4-4. Four, four. If you control a minion with 6 or more health, draw 2 cards. You're not going to control a minion with 6 or more health. Because you're not going to play it on the same turn unless it's a 4-6. Uh, I mean, unless it's a 2-6 or 2-7 for 4 mana. You can't. And those are very rare. Um... So you have to like play it after you put something on the board. And if that thing gets hit at all, and it probably will be, especially if it has low attack, because people hit things with low attack to try to get it off the board, then it won't have six health anymore. It's not like if a thing with six maximum health survives on the board, you get to draw cards. It has to currently have six health. Yep. And you can get the dream and buff this guy up, but that's going to be pretty tough. Yeah. Um, Fel Orc Soul Fiend is another really bad, almost unplayable card. Uh, I know some people think it's a playable card. Uh, I mean, kind of. You do get to attack with it once the turn after, right? Yes. Because you're not getting it back after that if you hit anything. It'll die before, like, at the start of your turn when it deals its second two damage to you, it's going to die. It's a 3-3 that has upside, like, that it has upside, but you need other cards to support it. Yeah. Or you need a hero power to support it. Right? Yeah. And remember, we're not, we're not evaluating this as Priest right now. Um, Priest has a bonus to it. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's basically a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three that has some upside, but not ones that you're... You, you have to use other cards to take advantage of the upside. Yep. Yeah. Like, don't draft that thinking that it's, like, a 3-3. Three, three. Like, it's yeah, way worse yeah. than a 3-3. Three, three. Yep. Uh, Dirty Rat is even lower. God, we're at 29 now. It's a 2-6 taunt for 2 mana, which seems good, until you read the battle cry, in which your opponent gets a random minion from their hand. That's not good. That's bad. Nope. Their minion's gonna be big. Probably bigger than this. So you've basically just done nothing. 
Yeah, and uh, with the hand buff mechanics as well, um, you could just be getting out, um, sort of helping them realize their buffs uh, earlier on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at the same time, you could uh, draw something that they don't want to play, draw something that uh, has a uh, battle cry so it doesn't get its full value. Like, even but... if they put out a 2-drop and it's a 3-2, which this eats, yeah, you haven't done anything, Like right? You've like removed one of their cards. Yeah, that's like it, and it's a small card too. Those are the only cards you can remove. Yep. Weasel Tumbler is our worst epic. It's a one-one for one mana. Death Rattle shuffle this minion into your opponent's deck. It's just it's bad because it's a one mana one-one. Yep. I actually gave it some value. Like, I built this shuffling mechanic in because it's designed to, like, disrupt your opponent's draws. So I reversed the, the draw mechanic, uh, like, for shuffling in your own deck. Um, it still doesn't do much, as you might imagine. Yeah. Sad. All right, all right. Now for the legendaries. You want to you wanna name your favorite legendaries, and I'll tell you where it is on the tier list? Name my favorite We're almost one? to the end. All right. Um, my favorite one. Jeez. Well, flavor-wise, I got to go with Finja, the Flying Star. Uh, that's kind of a favorite of mine. But Finja, the an, Flying Star, is a forty-one. I mean, look. It's so it's a two-four body with stealth for five mana. It's a Murloc. Whenever this attacks and kills a minion, summon two Murlocs from your deck. You should have. Like, it's not impossible to summon a Murloc. Right, um, you're gonna have uh, a couple Murlocs in your deck. I just really like the flavor of it. You're probably not summoning two Murlocs, but if you grab a Murloc, um, it's still below average. But hey, at least you got to play Finja. There you go. What's next for you? You play What's this card favorite? in order to play this card. That's that's the reward for playing this card. Yep, because it's certainly not on the board. Um, next, I'll go with the other two that are the same exact score. There's two more that's 41. One is Rathion, which is the six mana, four, five taunt with a battle cry that you draw cards until you draw one that isn't a dragon. So you draw one card. Yeah. So it's a four or five taunt, and then you pay a lot of mana to draw a card, which is not all that good. Um, I think people may think that it is higher until they realize just how much mana this one card is costing. That's really the problem with it, yeah. right? It's like um, heavily understated. Yeah. Um, but it is like good card advantage. Like you could take if you have nothing else to do, right? Like you just like take it and you don't play it until you're like totally full. And you're like, hey, sure. you get two cards, and one's a taunt too. So it's not like I'm dying when I'm playing it. Yeah, yeah. Um Mayor Nagenfagen. Nagenfager. Oh, God. What's the score? Uh, it's 41. I told you. These are all 41. Wait, what? You don't think it's a 41? No. How did you reach this? Okay, so, guys, I, I was not consulted on the legendaries. Uh, how... this, is, this is not... This is, I just pulled a number out of a hat. No, no, no. no. This is terrible. <laughs> this is, like, so bad. Why? All targets are chosen randomly. I don't understand how it helps you at all. No, no, no. This is bad. Um, what it was is I, I. This is actually calculated. I'm not gonna lie. This is calculated by the the uh, by the um, by the model, but it, it has an incorrect input because okay. it assumes all random targets. And as it turns out, oh. as I read earlier oh, today, oh, okay, you was, okay. I got gotcha, it. I turns gotcha. out it's not yeah, actually random yeah. targets. It's only random uh, like targets for your opponent. Right. Yeah. 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 Like. Okay. That's not what right. this said. So this is like just wrong. No, no, I, I got you, I got you. So when you first calculate, it was like total chaos. Yeah, it was right? total it chaos. It was a total chaos thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. But this requires gotcha. a recalculation to the extent that I even want to calculate it. <laughs> Could just like give it a really low score and like forget about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got you, I got you. Yeah, a lot of people actually made the assumption that you made. Yeah, because that's what um, it says. A lot of people can read. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, when people saw it, they were like, oh, it's like total RNG fest, right? Mm -hmm. Which 
would make it of some value, but it, it's just like a really bad Mogur the Ogre. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's different than Mogur the Ogre slightly, but people thought it was like a crazy, um, like, yeah. Anyways, moving on. So that needs to be changed because the score was calculated uh, before we realized that the card is highly disappointing. Huh. What's I'm going to recalculate some of these. Patches of the Pirate is a 1 mana 1-1 one, one with charge. Yeah. I don't know what I did with this one. But it is somehow like many, many, many points above a Stone Dust Boar. Well, whenever you play a pirate, summon this minion from your deck. I, I guess you gave no, a lot of... I, I did not. All right, guys. We, <laughs> we are seeing... We are seeing... I, I did not. We are seeing really the uh, the 4 a.m. Advocta. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's because it Stone Tusk Boar is wrong. Maybe that card is actually right. Yeah, okay. Stone Tusk Boar is. Eh, I don't know. Maybe Stone Tusk Boar is right. Well, we'll, we'll see. I'll review that as well as the Stone Tusk Boar. Yeah. Um, Anyways, guys. Yeah, so it seems like some work has to be done with the uh, the neutral legendaries. Yeah. That's something that we touched upon at the very end. I, just, I didn't want to do the legendaries. Like you can be able to adjust this so much. Sure. The legendaries are something we always. I mean, it's like, not we literally that, spent like the least time on legendaries, even for, though they're the most complicated cards. Obvious reasons. Yeah. Anyways, um, so because uh, the legendaries need tweaking, we can just say you can check out the scores once we've finished and once we've uploaded them but that's pretty much the uh the neutral cards right yeah um we have pretty three more legendaries let's just go through them madame okay. goya is uh 39 that's gonna stay there it's pretty basic choose a friendly minion swap it with a minion in your deck sergeant sally is uh 26 deal damage equal to this minion's attack this is a high synergy minions. card yeah it's yeah, a high synergy is, card let's see what it is in uh paladin paladin's pretty good synergy um, Warlock too. It is a 44 in Paladin. Sure. So it becomes like draftable. Yeah, Warlock has ways of, uh, you know, kind of. No, Warlock has one way. It's a very powerful way. Yeah, but... It's just one way. And, it has the, to, uh, and this 1 1 has to stay alive for a turn. Oh, no, it doesn't. You, no, no, you buff no, it, it immediately. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I you buff it. it immediately. Yep. That's not being accounted for in Warlock. <laughs> uh genzo the shark whenever this attacks both players draw until they have three cards um yeah that's a bird <laughs> this is like you can't you can't like value this any other way um it's it's actually kind of crappy because they always draw first yeah because they start their turn with all the cards drawn and you have to attack their face I, I mean, sorry, you have to attack with this guy first before you can have your cards. Yep. So, it's a little bad, but it's not like that big of a deal. Um, Auction Master Beardo is a 3 mana, 3 4. Whenever you cast a spell, refresh your hero power. It's worth a couple points, but generally it's the same as a spider tank. Yep. All right, um, that's it. We're nearing an euphoria. I'm dying. Uh, we will we will see you tomorrow for um, for a stream. Sorry, this is for YouTube. Man, we are dying. Uh, you have anything to say? Any last words before we we end this? Nope, that's it. Thanks, guys. Um, and uh, you know, make sure to check out the list. We're gonna definitely have some tweaks between now and uh, the Seven actual hours. The actual release, um, but no, I think the eight hours. But the gist of uh, no nine the hours. The release is in nine right. hours. Right, um, but I think you guys have gotten the gist, and uh, most of the scores I believe are correct and sort of consistent with uh, sort of the formulas that we've been. Most adapted. of the scores are correct. Like ninety nine percent of yeah, the yeah, scores 99%. are correct. Ninety nine percent. But anyways, guys, thank you for tuning in. Hope you guys. Uh, enjoyed it to whatever extent and uh we will be streaming tomorrow so hope to see you there as well thanks guys see ya uh, i want to give a a shout out one last time to uh our developer for uh for the light forge tier list 
a lot of work went into getting this up and functional at all um, for for this like really major update. Um, it's the first one we're doing with a backend in this uh, in this new um, for for a new expansion, and so glad it worked out. Um, and also to Alter Slayer who did the the art for these uh, for these cards, uh, the the little art at the bottom and the the icon, eh, the icon here. Um, all right, and also of course thank you to all of our patrons, and uh, and all of our Twitch subs uh, for contributing. Um, thank you guys for feeding the goat. It is way too late. I still have work to do. Murps is not going to sleep before he goes to work in the morning. Oh, MSG release date. All right. See you guys. Bye, guys.